All right, Fiberistas. All right, let me see if I make sure I have that turned off. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. I'm ha I was having some sound problems and Mercury's about to go into retrograde. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so thanks for joining. It's Sunday and I'm going to do a quick demo because to, uh, truth be told, I'm in the middle of getting this uh, Lace and Open Space class ready for you guys. And so I'm just going to do a little quickie right here. And But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share something really kind of major with you guys. Um, just because A, I need to have it done on this piece that I'm working on and B, because it's, it, like I said, it's kind of important. So today what I'm going to share with you is how to do a hem stitch. Um, and I'm going to share with you two different, um, methods of hem stitch and only because I, um, I've been shown two different ways to hem stitch and nobody really said oh these are two separate ways to hem stitch they both claim that this is the way to hem stitch and they're both a little different but i'm going to show it to you anyway both of them just because um it's i i think they have two different aesthetics um both of them hold the the weaving into place just the same but like i said um i had one teacher show me one way another teacher show me another way and both claim it's the hem stitch so there it is all right so i'm going to switch the camera around in a minute and share this with you but anyway i just wanted to say thanks for being patient um something's up with my streaming software i think it needs to be updated oh here goes the fire engines going by i'm gonna give it a minute and you might hear my dog yell too okay it's fine all right so i'm gonna switch the camera around and i'm going to show you guys i'm gonna do a little bit of weaving first and we're gonna talk about the upcoming class um, lace and open space. So let me switch the camera around and this time I promise you you're not going to be seeing my underwear this time. Hold on. If I can remember how to switch this. There we go. Okay. There we are. Woo! Uh, okay. So this is a weaving I'm working on. Um, it's the a demo weaving for um, and if you take that class you're going to see some of these techniques um, that I'm going to show you. But right now I'm going to share with you the hem stitch, and I know that I have a video, and I'll post it in the show notes, that already kind of shows you about hem stitching, um, and and it's uh, uh, but but I'm going to share, like I said, show you this one this time. That's going to show you two different different methods, and I'm not even really sure which one's the actual way to hem stitch. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave a couple of rows here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm about to hit the camera, the tripod here. So I'm going to have to be really careful. I'm going to move it this way. Okay. Yay. All right. Mm. My desk looks like yours. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what? I know a lot of people, when they get on YouTube, they clean up. <laughs> and I'll be honest, my studio stays a hot mess. And and uh, and I just got to the point where I don't really... I, you know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah. But, you know, if you look... I mean, I guess from, from the side view that uh, my desk looks really a hot mess and there's a lot of stuff on it but it's kind of a mindful bit of stuff all right i have a feeling i'm going to be knocking this tripod throughout this video so i apologize for that all right so what i'm doing is i'm doing a couple of rows here okay so you see i have this i have this off white that i've um, woven i have this technique that i'm going to be sharing with you in that class and here's an open space so I'm, I wove a little section and I'm going to weave this little detail area here. Now, a lot of times if you're doing a hem stitch, I mean, you don't have to necessarily change colors, but I'm doing it in this one just for, just so you guys can kind of see. So I'm just going to do like, I'm going to do four rows since this is a thinnish yarn. Okay. Okay, and then I'm coming back. Again, I'm working around the tripod, so I apologize. 
for that. Yay! I'm so glad you guys could join me. And again, I apologize for the delay. My, uh, I think it's time for me to update my software. But when I went to do that, it's it's like it looks like it's going to be an afternoon's worth of work because it wasn't going to update. It wasn't going to update automatically. Okay, so I just wove four little rows, and I'm just going to do that because I'm I, that's all I really need to do this hem stitching. So when I do this, I'm going to do give myself about four times the width here. All right. And I'm going to cut this off. All right. So, and I'm using this gigantic weaving needle. And you don't have to use this weaving needle. I, it's just because I have no earthly idea where my cabestry needles are. Um, I had them. I have them. I keep them in this little container. And I had company come to visit me this week. And um, I don't know where that container went when we were, like, throwing everything into the closet. Uh, getting ready for company. Okay. So, and you know what, I think I might need to, I'm hoping that you guys can see this. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I've got, let's see, two, two, four, six. You know what? I know I did it in sections of three. I'm going to keep it to sections of three. And I think the last section is four. All right. So I'm going to go around this way. Now this is the first way I've learned how to hem stitch. Um, and come back. Oh, wait, let me see. Wait, hold on. Come back. Oh, oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Here we go. We're going back around this way. Okay. Alright, so I came back up through the three. And it's going to wrap around these yarns here. And then I'm going back down underneath. And I'm going four rows down. Okay? And you see how, I don't know if you can see, this is kind of holding those yarns in there into place. Can you guys see that? I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. So then... I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to pick up these three right here again. I might need to move that camera closer. Okay, hold on. All right. And then when I go back around here, I'm going to I'm going to go loop through to to grab those yarns and then go back down through here. Okay. And you see how it's kind of pulling those yarns too. Okay, let me let me lower this a little bit. Because I have a feeling it needs to be closer so you guys can see it. All right. Okay. So let's try that again. Okay. So, so you see, I came out right here. So I'm going back around. Oops. I came off. And again, I'm using this weaving needle, but really a tapestry needle will do. Okay, and then I'm looping back around so that yarn crosses over those three yarns. And I'm going back down here. Okay. So you see how that, that kind of bunches those three together. And it's almost making like a, it reminds me of a blanket stitch because you have the cross yarn that's that's holding these three together it's tying those three and then this is coming up across those four yarns okay so let's do this again i'm going back over here behind and coming around those three Ugh, this keeps coming out okay and then i'm coming back across the three from behind and then coming up at the bottom of the the three right there. All right. Can you guys see that? I'm going to switch it to this way. I'm going to do it upside down. All right. So, again, I'm going to go back behind these three. 
And when I come back around, you see how it's grabbing the, it's make, it's wrapping around those? And then I'm, I'm going diagonally across right below where I came out of those three. Okay. There we go. I'll do that again. Go through here. Go back around and then I'm going to take this needle and come up through here okay and I'm just gonna do that across and then I'm going to show you guys how to do it um, the other way because you kind of need to know I mean if you were doing like if this was the top of my scarf then this would be, you know, what my fringe would be. But, you know, again, this is how I'm doing for open space. So, across this three. Whoops, wrong. Yeah, no, that's right, that's right. And then, it's kind of like the Kishner stitch that once you do it, you, you get it, but sometimes you kind of, sometimes I confuse myself. I have to remember, am I doing this right? And you can do any cluster. I don't, I don't, I try not to do, you know, more, a, a big bunch together. I, I mean, I think the most I'll do is maybe six if it's a really thin yarn. And if it's, if I'm twisting the fringe, I make sure that I do it in cluster, an even number of clusters so I can twist that fringe evenly. So yeah, so the Lace and Open Space, that goes live on Wednesday. And I've got some really exciting techniques to show you guys. I'm so excited. i am um, uh, been really, really busy with it. But I'm really excited about this class. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys, I mean, answering some of your questions. Because I know a lot of, a lot of questions has come up and it based on on uh, on open space uh, weaving in open spaces and and then I'm going to be revisiting some old school techniques for lace weaving and showing you how you can use some art yarns for that and I'll put a, a link of course in the show notes and again if you're on my newsletter once that goes live your um, Wednesday's newsletter is going to have a link all about it but again if you use, if you register by Tuesday night, um, I have a coupon code for 20% off. If you use the coupon code presale, P-R-E-S-A-L-E, -E, I'll give you 20% off the pre-registration price. All right. And that's good through the day before the registration goes live. And it goes live on uh, Wednesday, October 30th. So by Tuesday night, if you use that coupon code, you'll get 20% off. So you see, and this is, uh, this is how I hem most of my scarves, especially the ones that I do fringe. And, this, and, and then the, these, these little clusters would be would become my twisted fringe. That's what I would use to twist. Get this out of the way here. There we go. I'm trying to make sure that you guys can still see this. All right. You guys have any questions? I. I'm a little late, huh, Gabrielle? You are just fine. I was a little late too because I had some technical difficulties, but I got them kind of hammered out. Okay, and like I said, this is this is one of the ways that I learned how to do the hem stitch. 
but like I said, I'll be perfectly honest. I somebody showed me one of my teachers showed me a slightly different way, and I don't really I can't really say that I could tell you which is the correct way or if it, there's just a couple of ways you can do it. If so, but I you know both of them work. It's just both of them have a slightly different aesthetic. Now I like this way better just because it leaves a cleaner line to me um you know this this is a little neater you have you know this little diagonal coming across here but you have that one yarn that's wrapping around the front of of each little cluster of of warp ends and so this is this is the method that i use mostly if i'm doing any kind of hem stitching um and it just it works for all I now if it I usually use this if I'm ending with a rather thinnish yarn and I mean I guess you could do it with a thicker yarn but it would definitely make a, a difference and I usually like I said I keep um even if I end with a thicker yarn I'll go back and add a little bit of a thinner thinner yarn to hem stitch with um just a because it leaves less of a contrast between you know the ending the warp ends and the uh, and the end of the weaving um, and that's and this is and what I'm using here this is just a cotton just a regular old cotton weaving yarn okay so I have four on this end so I'm just going to go ahead and and do this okay so when I go around you see I don't have a an edge to go back to. So what I do is I go back around and, and as that cluster catches right there, I'll just go ahead and, and tie like a half hitch on that end. All right, and then what I'll do is when I'm done uh, finishing this piece, then I will go back and weave that end in just a little bit all right so that's how you do that one and I'm gonna leave myself enough to to weave that in what I might do is either weave it down through this edge or or just kind of weave it back through here or if this were fringe a lot of times what I would do is just let that lay alongside of there and and twist that in with the fringe but again I'm just doing a space here all right so what I'm also going to show you is how to do the other one, which I hear is called the hem stitch as well, but it's slightly different. All right, but what I need to do first is weave a little section, and I'm going to actually advance my, my warp just a bit. All right. Okay, so when I weave it this time, and it's not going to really matter where I start off because, uh, there we go, it's not going to really matter where I start off because this, this is, this was finished, the finished off edge. So I'm going to just do, oh, you know what, let me put this back through here. Okay, so when I start off on this edge, I'm going to make sure, again, instead of finishing off with an end, I'm going to, on the very first, I'm going to make sure I have four times the width, two, three, four, because I'm going to pick up this end, and this is what I'm going to use to hem stitch with, and I'm not going to leave myself that much space just a little bit we don't need that much really okay moving back through all right and i'm weaving upside down so it's a little <laughs> a little weird
again I'm gonna do just you know what I might do five rows since I'm starting off whoop I thought I had that turned off okay maybe one more row okay and then I'm gonna cut that off down here Trim that later. Okay, that's gonna be. Now let me get a comb for that. Okay. I mean, this is just a comb that I have that I use, especially if I'm doing any kind of like tapestry type work. Okay, so what I do, all right, let's see, there's a question. I usually pull each stitch tighter to make a, a tighter bunch that looks like you did it on the last version, is there a reason to make it looser? Uh, no. I mean, uh, it, it usually holds pretty well. I mean, I don't feel like I have to pull it too tight. Um, it, it could go either way, honestly. So, um, I haven't had a problem with it, it loosening, it not being too loose. Alright, so here's that other version, and I'm going to do it, um, so usually, alright, see starting off I get myself confused a little bit, okay, I think I come around this way, okay, so when, when you go down, you know how you on the other one I kind of went here and it, it, it caught that bunch like that, right? Well this other way that, that one of my weaving teachers taught me is to to come up let me go back through here. Is that when when you come around you go on the inside of that loop. Okay, so it kind of makes this interesting little knot thing going on here. All right. So then go around. Wait, I'm confusing myself. Wait. Oh, you see, now I'm confused. Hold on. Let me do a couple of the regular ones and then I'll go back through. back up. Alright, so if you go around, you come through like that. When you go back through, instead of coming up and then letting that just wrap around the bunch, she did this thing where she let it catch that loop there. Like that. And then she would go up. She would go around. And then when she would come back around and then go on the inside of that loop and then come back up. And it kind of, let's see, it kind of, 
it, it does this other weird thing and it makes I don't know it's just a little different and like I said I kind of prefer the one that has that line straight across but again this is this is how one of my teachers taught me going back through here going back down across and then back up so you see how I'm catching that loop there So again, when you go down here, then you, you, instead of having the loop up, up this way, you catch it on the inside of that. And I don't think, I don't think it has as clean of an edge to it, but I, you know, I don't know that that's a deal breaker. So, it feels a little, you know, in a way it feels almost a little more secure, but it, like I said, it doesn't have as clean of an edge. I guess if you went up like this, it would. Well, no, because then it's pulling up something weird like that. Okay. Go across. And then coming down catching that loop. to work across here okay so this so this is good like if you're doing if you're starting a weaving and you you know you've got your warp separator stuff I use toilet paper for warp separator um you know this is the way I know in uh, another video I did the hem stitch off the loom this is this works good because it's it kind of you know, on the loom, it tensions it. So yeah, so if I were, you know, like I said, from here, I'll, I'll do some other weaving up through here and this just leaves an open space but like I said this is a way that you could you would start if you were doing hem stitch on both edges now if you were doing hem stitch on both edges you know of course you could, I, I would tend to want to do the same hem stitch whichever method you choose on on each end but again it doesn't you know either or really I mean maybe it's you do one and then the other end you do something different you know especially with wall hangings I mean it's going to be it's not I want that to be down there wall hangings it's not going to matter as much I don't think because one end is going to be finished differently anyway oh, my cat's here it must be time for his pill which means as he sees it, time for his wet food. <laughs> okay, let's see. Again, this will end. Tangled in my scissors here.
two more clusters to go. just kind of makes it a little knot here and then I would just cut that and, and I'll go back and afterwards and weave that in all right so there you have it there's two different kinds of hem stitching oh, it's a little bit on the diagonal let's see if I can beat that a little bit All right, so there you have it. All right, I'm gonna switch the camera around. Ta-da, yay. All right, so that's what I got for you today. Um, hem stitching. And uh, like I said, I know one of them's technically the hem stitch. <laughs> I'm not sure which one, because like I said, I had one teacher teach me one way and then the other. It seems like when I looked it up online, the first way, here, let me show you, flip it back again. You know, the first way, whoop, this way, I mean, this way, it just looks a little, I don't know if you can see, it just looks a little cleaner to me. And this is the one, if I looked up hem stitch, this is, or when I look in my reference books, this is what it looks like. And then this was the one, it, it, it's pretty secure though. I think that extra little half hitch knot, you know, as you're looping it through, makes a big difference as far as, you know, it really tight in there. But, you know, I've never had a problem with this hem stitching, you know, coming loose or anything, especially if you're twisting the fringe. So that's just, you know, ways to secure each end or to, you know, have some open space. All right. All right let me switch the camera back. So that's what I got for you. Um, again, Lace and Open Space goes live on Wednesday. I've got some really, oh, here, I'll show you some of the stuff. Hold on. Let me, here's some of the examples I'm going to share with you. Let me switch this back. Yeah. yeah. Here's some of the open space stuff that we're going to be talking about. So, anyway, I'm excited. I'm excited about the class. And, again, it's going to go live on Wednesday. Um, check out the show notes. I'll be posting those on Wednesday and sending out that announcement to the newsletter. And otherwise, I will see you guys next Sunday. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, either leave them in the comments below or hit me up um, in the, the um, Fiber Art Collective, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, or just send me, send me an email. Send me one straight up. So anyway, thanks for joining, and I will see you guys later. Bye.